Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture of Quality and Reliability Engineering. I am Milan Trivedi, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Basically, we are discussing about chapter number 4 that is Just-in-Time Quality Management, Total Productive Maintenance and ISO. In the last class, we had already started with the concept of ISO. We learned about the concept of ISO 9001, what is the procedure to get the ISO 9001. What are the different benefits if the company is having the ISO 9000 certificate? Now in today's class, I am going to uh, elaborate about the second ISO standard that is ISO 14000. Coming to the 14000, ISO 14000 basic concept is a set of actually rules and standards created to help the companies address their environmental impact. See most of the companies, mechanical companies is having the uh, byproduct which is ultimately harming the environment. So the aim of this 14,000 norm is to regulate the particular hazards which is given by the company to the environment, right? The, we need to regulate that particular hazard so that we will be having overall benefit to the environment as well as to the organization. The basic concept of this 14,000 is such. The certification is optional for all the corporations rather than mandatory. It is not mandatory that each and every organizations need to go for this particular certificate. But if the company is taking the certificate, naturally the reputation of that company will get increased. ISO 14000 is intended to be used to set and ultimately achieve environmentally friendly business goals and the objectives. This type of certification can be used as a marketing tool for engaging environmental conscious consumers and may help firms reach mandatory environmental regulations. Let me give you one small example so that you will get the clear idea. If you visit the Ankleshwar area of the Gujarat, naturally you will get the idea that there are lot of chemical industry present at the Ankleshwar site. From the environment also you will get the idea that the Ankleshwar has been arrived, right? because the different smell is present in that environment and that smell is actually the result of the particular biodegradable hazards which are being liberated by the different chemical industry, right? But as I told that it is not mandatory to regulate that thing. Uh, so some of the companies are not taking that ISO 14000 certificate. But uh, imagine a scenario that out of 10 different companies present in the enclosure, one company is taking the certificate. So the brand image of that company naturally will get increased. So if any huge company want to give some order to that chemical industry, let's say some pharmaceutical industry wants some chemical drug, right? So uh, a big pharmaceutical company we are having in uh, Gujarat itself is Zydus. They will need to give some order to some company present at Anklishwar. So naturally they will give the order to such company is ISO 14000 certified because a big brand name has been attached, right? So that can have an added advantage if some company is taking this certificate. Coming to the principal part that what are the different scopes of getting this ISO 14000 certificate, there is a involvement of three different P's in that. The first P is for the people. Naturally, all the people who is working in that organization will be having a different kind of trust on that company. Along with that, the direct customer of that particular company will also be having a proper trust on that because nowadays we are more eco-conscious, right? So all the peoples will be having a direct advantage whether they are the people working in that company or whether that people are a part of a consumer of that company. All the people will be having a different view side of the company or from for that company who is taking this ISO 14000 certificate. Okay. The second P is for the planet. Naturally, all the planets uh, directly advantage we are having because ultimately we are saving the environment. Let me give you one example. If from the chimney carbon monoxide has been liberated, right, which is a very harmful gas. But if that carbon monoxide has been converted into carbon dioxide, which is a non-harmful gas, just by adding simple one oxygen molecule, right? Obviously, we are saving a particular environment. Let us take one more example. If some chemical company is there who is uh, liberating a lot of chemical waste into the river, fine. 
that you will see in the Baruch and Ankleshwar area. So, if that particular wastewater is been treated first and then they are liberating into river, then lot of water pollution can also be saved, right? We are having a wastewater treatment plant, right? Just treat that wastewater, useful water just liberate into the river and whatever the waste part is there, you need to dump separately, right? So, these are the different ways to save the environment. If you want to get this 14,000 certificate, you need to have that kind of approach into your organization, right? But ultimately, it is saving the planet. The third P is for the profit, right? Because ultimately, you will grab a more contract if you are implementing this ISO 14,000 certificate, right? So, overall, the profit of the company get increased. Coming to the implementation part, if you want to get this ISO 14000 certificate, first of all, you need to do the preliminary assessment, right? You need to go visit such organization who is giving the certificate. They will check your document. They will again do the initial assessment. Then the main assessment in which the audit is been done. Then they will provide the certificate and surveillance will be carried out because timely the checking of the all the different parts of the industry is required because once you are getting the certificate then again you are wasting the environment then it is of no use. The certificate appears like this in which ISO 14001 is written semicolon 2015 means that is the last year in which the copy has been or the rules has been updated. Coming to the benefit part it actually all the benefits are related to the environment it reduces the environmental risk environmental management is done properly all the employees will be aware about the employ uh, environment there will be increased efficiency and that is cost effective we are having an enhanced relationship and the communication with employees regulators and all the stakeholders now coming to the qs 9000 qs 9000 is been developed by the three automotive manufacturers the three giant names are ford general motors and Daimler chrysler they felt a need that our automotive industry is somewhat different. We are having a more components. So for keeping that thing in mind, they had formed this standard quality system 9000 standard in which the three sections are been covered. That is the scope of US 9000. They are taken all the ISO 9000 certificates, the rules. Secondly, they had considered the sector specific requirement and the customer specific requirement. So, for all the different automotive components, we are having a standards, right? That was set initially by all the, the three giant names for General Motors and Daimler Chrysler. Coming to the scope part, it is a quality system standard that focuses on helping automotive suppliers, which ensures that they are meeting the automotive customer requirements. As mentioned before also, it uses the ISO 9000 as a core means all this document control, corrective action, auditing is very much similar to this ISO 9000 but it adds a few additional requirement which is sector specific which is a, a specific requirement of the automotive industry. Coming to the benefit part, it improves the internal communication, it improves the business process, it is saving the cost of the industry, all the staff will get trained and that is a strong quality culture due to the quality system. Now coming to the implementation barrier of standards. If any of the standard if you want to implement, which are the different hurdles, right? The first hurdle is the case for ISO certification is not compiling, right? If company want to get the certificate, but they are not following all the rules, right? Or they are not in a stage to uh, just get all the different rules. The second is the resistance to change due to the fear and the misperception of the ISO, right? They are not ready to change or they are having a fear that we are not able to cope up the requirements which is given by the ISO. Third thing is the inadequate team support or the management sponsorship. They are not getting the adequate fund in order to get the ISO certificate. The fourth is the perceived added cost and resources to implement and maintain ISO. Obviously, a lot of cost will get incurred, a lot of more resources you need to do and the management is not ready to give that cost in the particular certification. The fifth is the poor project management or change in management, that is the management perspective and the last thing is the unrealistic expectations. Right? This can prove to be a hurdle in order to get the ISO certificate. 
now that's all about all the iso concept and today's class thanks